let's let's look into some of the reading of the scripture and i wanted to kind of show you how to look at things um to make everything and i do mean everything um compare with what jesus said um what did jesus say about some of these scriptures how does different parts of the new covenant I say New Testament, which is the um, other books uh, after the Old Testament, after Jesus, um, and uh, mainly starting with the book of Acts, uh, following through, of course, from Luke, because he wrote the book of Acts as well. But when you look at that, uh, just things that jump out at you, uh, when you look at the conversion of uh, Paul, and uh, you go through his story with King Agrippa and how he was converted and how he wishes that King Agrippa would also uh, get a hold of this uh, uh, faith, uh, belief in Jesus. Uh, when you look at that stuff, when you read that, and I ask the question, uh, how many, um, when I read the story of Jesus, I, I remember when I first started going through the New Testament, the New Covenant of Jesus Christ, reading the Gospels. Um, I, I remember very well how that as I read through the story uh, of Jesus and all the things and those that came after him and, 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 and the things that they did uh, to a, a man that wanted to do good, and as he pointed out their evil and began to show them who they really are, or at least expose them for what they were. Um, so when you look at that, um, but, but my point is, is as you read the story of Jesus, you can't help but to be very sad and, 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 and emotional. Um, if you're seeking for the Lord, you, you, you are engulfed in the story of Jesus. You want everything. You are a sponge sopping up every detail. And as you go through those details, you, you see the pain and you see the rejection and, and you see what he was trying to do. And as you learn the scriptures and as you see uh, the gospel, um, you begin to, I mean, I personally, I, I had tears many times uh, while reading through the New Testament, the story of Jesus, uh, his life, the gospel. And uh, there's, there's tears of joy, there's tears of sorrow. Um, and, and one of the things that I noted, and I, and I mentioned to someone also, I said, you know, if you look at it, and, and many of you know the stance that I have, that we must be critical even of the scripture. The scripture must be uh, looked at. Jesus said, search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. And, and I understand that he was probably talking about the, the Old Testament of them recognizing him as the Messiah, but, but that still holds for, for our generations today. We think we know the truth. We think we have Jesus uh, wrapped up in a bag, so to speak. We think that we are on the right path in the religions that there are. We choose a religion, a, a flavor of faith, if you will. Uh, we choose those things. We choose an organization uh, that, that we want to be a part of in representation of the particular flavor of the day. So when you look at that, you, you see that, that flavor of religion. Now, again, like I said, many of you know that I am not a part of religion. I refuse to be part of that corporate structure that I believe is unbiblical. I believe it is not, not I, I guess I should be careful saying unbiblical because Oh, well, you look, read the book of Acts, and hey, they had a church here, they had a church here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but it, did it go with Jesus? Were they 
following Jesus in all this? Did Jesus validate? Did Jesus set up any churches? The only church Jesus set up was his own. And he said the gates of hell would not prevail against it. And as I said before, I'll say again, that if Jesus set up a church with that statement, and it was a physical church, you and I would be able to go visit it still to this day. That's not the case, and that's not what he was talking about. He proved that with the woman at the well, that the Father seeketh such to worship him. The time will come, and now is, when the Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth, not in a building, not at a place, not at Jacob's well, not in the holy new Jerusalem or Jerusalem, none of those places. God made this a spiritual thing, and this we will follow. Amen. So when you look at that and getting back, when you read the story of Jesus, again, there's, there's much emotion. And so when I read the story of Paul in the book of Acts, there is also much emotion. That emotion parallels and rises to the height of what Jesus went through. And, and to, the, to the death, not, not for our sins, but when you read it, I had the same emotional feelings reading that story of Paul which later on, I now see that to be a problem. So what I wanted to do was is kind of kind of bring you along with me in some of these some of these areas, um, and let me let me uh, try to find. Oh, let's see here. I didn't set up my uh, the the one. Let me let me pull that up real quick. It's uh, let me pull up the web. Let me find it real quick. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So, so to keep us on track here, um, the I'm going to go just to the Bible part of it because it's okay. So let's let's go ahead. I'll just tell you about the story that that I'm talking about, and and that was where. Um, Ananias and, and, and Spira was, was supposedly sold some land, and they were talking about this in Acts uh, chapter 5, um, when they supposedly sold some land. Um, actually, we're in the Bible. Let's just go to it. I'll just, uh, we're in Acts right now. Let's, let's just go there, and we'll come back to Acts 19 in a moment. Um, so let's, let's go to chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, uh, somewhere along here. Um, yeah, so here we are. Uh, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy or known about it, uh, brought the certain part and, and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, first of all, I, I find this odd that Jesus um, had never told them. Now, he said, tell, sell all that you have, you know, uh, unless you sell everything. And, 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 and that, was, that was more of an uh, analogy of, of he has to be first. He didn't expect you to give all your food away and uh, go, go, go starve to death and die. So, so those that would... Uh, quibble with some of this stuff, um, or just acting silly. But the point is, is the fact that they wanted to bring all these, these uh, uh, monetary supplies and things to a, a group of people, the men, that, that basically, um, as, as Paul was here and, and, and the elders, whatever, um, these folks were moving into the same thing that Jesus um, had railed against on the scribes and Pharisees. And, and so nowhere do I find where Jesus linked any of this up. But, but more to the point here, you, you find Ananias, Sapphira, um, and, and Peter said, and now here's Peter injected into this, um, they brought it in a certain part, just a piece of it, 
of, of what they had profited and laid it at the apostles' feet. Well, I don't find that biblical at all. Jesus, the, the, the closest we got of anything at, at, at Jesus' feet was when he asked how much, if anybody had any food, and the five loaves and uh, three fishes, uh, vice versa, whatever. But the point is, is that there, Jesus never required anybody to bring tithe, bring anything, and I don't believe this was tithe, but it, whatever it was, they were instituting it on their own, out of their flesh. Now, it wasn't commandment. So here to inject what we're about to read, I find it very difficult to even believe the story that they would even be doing this. So when you look at that, it said that, but Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? and to keep back part of the price of the land and when they were supposed to give it all to him. <laughs> and so it, while, it, while it remained, was it not thy own? And after it was sold, and we're, we're reading five and four here, was it not thine own, in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart and hast not lied unto men but unto God? And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He died. And great fear came upon all them that heard these sayings. And we'll just cut to the chase. His wife came and she collaborated with his story here. Um, and then she died. Okay, so here's the big problem I have with this story. I, I don't believe it. I If they did it, I don't believe the Holy Ghost was involved in it. Um I, I honestly believe that this is a lie. I think this, this is a preposter that has put this in here. And if, if it is true, then they were dead wrong. And I know it wasn't the Holy Ghost that killed those people. I know that because Jesus never killed anyone. This is not following Jesus Christ. They did not get a ticket and a free reign to go off and do whatever they wanted. And I don't believe this part of that. I don't believe it is, it is right. It's not Jesus. It has nothing to do in God and this thing happening. Not in the faith, not by Jesus. So when you look at that, these people died because they didn't bring the proper amount of money and lay it at the apostles' feet. Are you kidding me? At some point, you have to realize that some of this has just got to be hogwash. And I'll tell you that right now. And I'll tell you why I tell you that. The big problem about this whole thing is that there were many, 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 many times that Jesus could have bestowed judgment. This was not the time of judgment. This was the time of refreshing. And this is why I have a problem with that. When Peter stood up in Acts 2.38, just a few chapters ahead of this, and, and, and gave everybody, though they slain Jesus with wicked hands, that if they would come to repent and be baptized, and, and this was the, 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 the prophecy of the prophet Joel, that the Spirit of the Lord bring liberty and, 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 and your sons and your daughter, all these things, and now... We have someone that, that supposedly didn't bring the full amount of a monetary substance called money, which who benefits for this but man, and that you can say work of God all you want, but God has a means to do anything he wants without these two people's money, and, and I don't see where Jesus did anything like this to cause fear. When the, when the evil spirit was in the man and these evil spirits said, you come to judge us before our time, Jesus. And Jesus said no. And they asked him if they could go into the swine. He allowed them to go into the swine. Now, what is worse, if there could be, 
If what is worse, these people not bringing 100% of the, the money or, or profit that they sold their land for and putting at the apostles' feet, or these demons controlling this person's life, causing them to cut themselves and all these vile things that this man was doing because he was possessed by these demons. So when you look at the two, weigh it out, put it in a scale. You didn't get 500 bucks. They held back 500 bucks. Okay? The demons had, had, had thrashed this guy's life, caused him to hurt people, hurt himself and everything else. Put that in a balance. Do you not think Jesus would have judged them much harder than what is claimed to judge a two followers that did bring something the the, the great portion of their sell, selling and 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 they they're left held a little bit back and you're going to tell me that the holy ghost was partied to killing these people because that's what it infers here and I say inference, because Satan hath filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. They made it about the Holy Ghost in this story, which I do not believe. I'm not buying it. So you have to rightly divide the word of truth. If it veers off of what Jesus said, we have a problem. If it veers off of what Jesus done, we have a problem. Your ears should tick up. Your, your hearing should get very acute to say, hey, what is, no, this, this just doesn't seem like Jesus to me. In all his ministry, all the writings of four Gospels, nowhere did Jesus bring death to anyone. Nowhere did Jesus bring harm to anyone. He sent the spirits into the swine. They ran off the cliff. So when you look at that, he, he upset the money changers' tables to someone that desecrated what well, he said the house of God should be made the house of prayer. What he was doing is showing how we should feel about him and, and, and being holy. So tell me, judging yourself, would Jesus be behind killing these two people that were servants that loved the Lord, were baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost? You're going to tell me this story is true. You're going to tell me you're going to swallow this camel. I will not swallow this camel. When you go to Acts 15, and I brought this up many times, if you listen to anything of my teaching and, 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 and reading of the Scripture, you will see Acts 15. These folks were dead wrong, saying that they had to live, the Gentiles had to be circumcised and, and, and follow the law, and James came back, and they had a big old thing, and, and, and basically they came back and said, no, no, no. <laughs> You don't have to obey the law, and you don't have to be circumcised. And we we apologize that these yahoos came and told you all this stuff. So when you look at that, before you get out of Acts 15, you see it where the Pharisaical converts came into the church. What I mean came into the church, they, they were baptized they, in Jesus' name, I would imply, because that's what where we were in the Scripture. So when you look at this, they were part of the disciples. Paul was not an apostle. He made himself, he can call himself what he wants. God never called him to any more than you and I um, by his own words. Um, so anyhow, I want to go now to chapter 19. So again, there is no way Jesus was behind this, this mess. No way. I don't buy it at all. All right, so let's go to chapter 19 and verse 14, and let's look at this story as well. So 
when we look here, and there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? Notice here, again, when you go through and read Paul's conversion, and, and I'm not going to take the time to do that in this uh, video, uh, because what I wanted to bring out is that the fact that Jesus taught his disciples, and we know this through the Gospels, that whenever anyone tried to give them credit or praise or speak their name, they immediately, almost in an attacking fashion, the way I read it, would, would say, no, that's, that's not true. You, you, it's, it's only by the name of Jesus that this man stands here whole. It's only by the name of Jesus that this miracle happened. We're just men like you. We have faults. We're, we're not God. We're not Jesus. And so when you look at that, that was fresh out of teaching of Jesus. Now, somehow, when we get over here to the book of Acts and some of these, these uh, the story of Paul and, and, and some of the uh, highlights of Paul, Guess what? Paul seems to be lifted up. Paul seems to be lifted up. Where, outside of when Paul says, I baptized none in my name, as though someone would come and say that uh, I baptized in my own name. I didn't baptize anyone. Uh, I left the other, the other workers to baptize people. So those wouldn't say that I baptized in my own name. Wait a minute. That seems a little odd and out, out, out of kelter. But when you read, Paul seems to be injected at the level of Jesus throughout the stories. Just like here in verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you? So was Paul the only one there? No, he wasn't. So why is Paul the one that gets called out here? Why is Paul the one that gets lifted up? See, this is a problem for me. I do not. I cannot. I cannot swallow some of these things. And, and when you look there, it's all about Paul, and we got... Jesus sprinkled in here and there. And if you don't see that, if you don't, if you're not seeing those things when you're when you're going through the scripture, when you're reading these stories, if you're not seeing that, you're not looking. You're not understanding what's being said here. And I've got pastors that will that will, oh well, Paul was the greatest man. There's whole religions based off of just Paul. And again, I use this term very heavily because I believe it to be so, because it promotes itself. Paul is promoted to the level and many times above the level of Jesus Christ. This is what we have to be aware of. If you were looking at, at, at Paul, when you were looking at, at those things, you, you're, you better be careful because the whole church religion is set up by either Paul himself or his influence that Jesus never, never, not in the scriptures I've ever read, collaborated, collaborated, at all with any of these things. And again, I'll drop the scriptures over and over again. Matthew 20, 25, 26, uh, Mark 10, 43 to 45, uh, Luke uh, 22, 25, 26. Read them. Jesus said there won't be any one above the other. That's not going to happen in his kingdom. You're all going to be on the level playing field. 
no one's greater. And if you want to go into that mess, he said, then count yourself the least. So that's what I wanted to bring today. And I'm telling you, folks, these, these people are dead wrong. These these folks that that are that are right in this 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 false teaching, um, there's a problem. There's a problem with that. Either Jesus in the Gospels and what Jesus said was wrong, or Paul's wrong. Both writings cannot be right. They do not correlate. They do not muster together. And this this is a problem. And if you study this, go ahead, look at it. You'll see. You'll see exactly. I just read it to you. We didn't, we didn't read Paul's whole story of his conversion and all that stuff. Go read it. Read the book of Acts. See how Paul is lifted up. And he's a man. And, and, and I don't even see. I can't. It doesn't come to mind right now where... To, to reference to you that Paul said, hey, don't praise me, praise Jesus. But the apostles did that. So anyhow, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there for today. And I appreciate those that, that watch and, and, and are part of this ministry. Um, so anyhow, I will talk at y'all later. And we're going we're gonna to end it here. And uh, have a great evening.